I'm going to roll through this introduction to plate tectonics relatively quickly for the lab this week because I'm assuming you are either taking the lecture version of the class either online or live concurrently or you've already taken it and passed it. In addition to that, there's a fairly detailed explanation of plate tectonics in the lab itself. Here we go. If you look at the left hand side, this is a map of the Earth. For about 200 years or so, the Earth has been mapped fairly accurately. And because of that, people have looked at that map and saw that there are some suspicious things going on. For example, the east coast of South America and the west coast of Africa, as you can see on the right hand side, look very suspiciously like they could be stuck together or they could be glued together or at one point they were tied together. Well, indeed they were. About 225 million years ago, there was one single supercontinent called Pangaea, and then you can notice the progression here, where 150 million years ago it was breaking apart, 100 million years ago the continents as we know them today began to emerge, and then we have Earth today. The concept that we use to describe what has happened is called plate tectonics. This was proposed in the 1960s, and plate tectonics is this. It's the theory that says that the Earth's crust is made up of about 15 individually moving pieces or quote unquote plates that interact in various ways to produce earthquakes, mountains, volcanoes, and the crust itself. There are three movements with plate tectonics. Divergence, which means the plates pull apart. Convergence, which means they run into each other. And then transform movement, a kind of awkward term that means they move side by side or laterally. This is what a divergent plate boundary looks like, where there are convecting currents within the asthenosphere and the crust rides on top of those convecting currents. And where the convecting currents pull apart, that creates divergence. In other words, the crust rips apart, as you can see happening there in the oceanic crust. The most obvious place this happens, although it happens in many places, is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which runs right through the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and mirrors the east coast of South America and the west coast of Africa. Here it is right here. This is a site of crustal divergence, and indeed this is how North America and South America separated from Africa and the Eurasian Plate. You can see on the left-hand side that this shows these asthenospheric currents going around and as a result of that the crust ripping apart in the middle of those currents and on the right hand side you can see a very similar thing with the upwelling and the convective currents happening within the asthenosphere and as a result of that the creation of the mid-atlantic ridge and that pulling apart that happens that divergent plate boundary the most obvious place to see this because most of the mid-atlantic ridge is submerged is in Iceland, which sits right on top of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. You are looking right at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge in this valley as you look at this photograph. And in fact, there's even a crack that runs through the valley that is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Convergence is the second movement. Now, you have to understand that there are two types of crust, continental crust and oceanic crust. The continental crust is the lighter, least dense part of the crust. This is found mostly where the continents are at. And then the oceanic crust is a heavier, denser crust. This is found overwhelmingly where the oceans are at. And there's three types of convergent movement. Continental oceanic convergence, continental continental convergence, and oceanic oceanic convergence. With continental oceanic convergence, a process called subduction occurs. Subduction happens when the heavier, denser oceanic crust slides under the lighter, less dense continental crust, as you see happening in this diagram. That results in orogeny. Orogeny means mountain building. And you can see that along the coastline in this diagram on the continental crust that there are indeed mountains. And in fact, not only are there mountains, but there are volcanoes because as that subducting oceanic crust goes down into the earth, it gets very hot through friction. And because it's getting deeper into the earth where it's hotter, and it melts. That melting magma rises to the surface and creates volcanoes. Furthermore, subduction results in deep sea oceanic trenches, which can generally be found right in the interaction zone between the two colliding crusts, the two pieces or plates that are running into each other. Where does this happen? 
Well, this is what creates the Andes Mountains in South America, where the Nazca Plate, an oceanic plate, subducts under the South American Plate, which is a continental plate. In Central America and Southern Mexico, where the Cocos Plate, an oceanic plate, subducts under the North American Plate. In the Cascade Mountains, which run from California through Oregon and Washington, where the Juan de Fuca Plate, which is an oceanic plate, subducts under North America, which is North American Plate, is a continental plate. And then where the Aleutian Islands are at, hanging off the side of Alaska, where the Pacific Plate subducts underneath the North American Plate. Let's take a look. Here's a map of the Earth's tectonic plates, and you can see that the Nazca Plate and the South American Plate run into each other, which creates the Andes Mountains. The Cocos Plate and the North American Plate are running into each other in Central America and Southern Mexico, which creates the mountains in Mexico and throughout Central America. And the Juan de Fuca Plate runs into North America, which creates the Cascade Mountains, all volcanoes. And then the Pacific Plate, which heads to the northwest, as we learned in the earthquake slab, subducts underneath North America and creates the Aleutian Islands, which are basically a long volcanic island chain. Continental-continental convergence results in the following. Because two continents are similar densities, rather than subduction, what generally happens is rising of land. So the movement is overwhelmingly upwards. The most obvious place this happens is where the Indian plate runs into the Eurasian plate and creates the highest mountain range on earth, the Himalayas. When two oceanic plates run into each other, in other words, oceanic oceanic convergence, what happens is because they are both of similar densities, interestingly enough, they subduct. It's because they're both heavy and dense. And the result of that is both deep sea oceanic trenches. This is the way the Marianas Trench is formed, the deepest part of the ocean. And what's known as an island arc system. Like, for example, the Philippines and Indonesia. Transform movement happens when the plates move side by side. And this is, of course, what the San Andreas Fault is. The San Andreas Fault, is, of course, is formed where the Pacific and North American plates move next to each other.